Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, today we're doing something outside the shop or on my property. I have several dead live oak trees that have been dead for a while that we need to take down. Um, so basically what's happened here is we've got, if you're from Texas or the hill country, you know uh, of oak wilt, and that's basically what's killed these live, oak, these live oak trees. Live oaks are very hardy trees. They can survive drought, freeze. Um, they are tough trees, but oak wilt unfortunately takes them out quick. First off, I wanna preface this by saying I am not an arborist or you know a professional at this. I know enough to understand it, the basics of oak wilt. So it's a fungus that clogs up the vascular system of an oak tree and kills it really quick. Uh, it's spread in two ways. There's a beetle that is attracted to the sap of these oaks. So if an infected tree um, gets this beetle on it, it'll get the fungal spores and then it can then move to a non-infected tree and spread the fungus, fungal spores to that tree and infect that tree. But more commonly, it's gonna move through the root system, um, which is what's happened here. All these oak trees are inter intertwined underneath us underground through their roots. And so that, fun that fungus just kind of slowly creeps through all the trees. It's, it's really honestly pretty sad. And when we bought this property, we had zero oak wool, although I did see it around in neighboring houses. And it's finally made its way onto the property, unfortunately. And there, there's two ways you can prevent the spread of oak wool. You can use a fungicide and inject it into the tree. Uh, and I've done that on most of my trees on the property and it has helped and it's saved, I think it's saved several. Um, the big one back here is thinned out quite a bit. It's definitely gotten infected, but it's um, still kicking. Still got some good canopy and it's springtime right now. It's popping out pollen, so that's a good sign. You can also trench. Um, that's a good thing to cut the root system, but there's a lot of parameters to that. And my property is too small and too condensed to really effectively trench it. So real quick, I want to take you guys on a little walk around, show you a few of the trees, and then we're going to get started. Okay, shop is there. You're looking at the back side of the shop. We've got, this was the first tree that got infected. It's been dead for several years. This is the beautiful, just old growth tree. One of my favorite trees that has thinned that. You can see the canopy's pretty thin up top, but it's still, still going strong. This little lot of trees here have died. You can see I already took one down. Um, and then this one here has still got some life. We'll save it. So moving this way, we have one, you can kind of see the trunk right there. That is an awesome tree. It's got limbs that come down to the ground. My kids climb in it. I've treated all those. So those should all hopefully cross our fingers and pray that those will stay alive. But we're gonna, we're gonna take a few of these down today. And then the one tricky one we're gonna work on is this one. It's kind of hugging some power lines or some utility lines. And then behind the shop, which future plans for this maybe is to put in a couple shipping containers or one to store lumber and possibly a spray booth so this one's going to come down it's dead i think we can take it down this one here i'm going to leave it's actually still kind of fighting for its life it's got a little bit of canopy a little few leaves there but you know 95 percent of it is gone it's too close to the shop and i'm pretty sure i would not do a good job of taking that one down and then we've lost a tree here same there. I think I can take that one down, but I don't know if we'll tackle that today. This one is kind of hanging on to life. Still got some canopy, so we don't need to mess with that. And then in the back corner, we got some dead ones. So it's kind of coming on this side of the property, and I've treated everything moving that way. So all we can do is hope, hope that it kind of stops here and moves somewhere else. Got to move old Maggie's grave, man. We'll, we'll set it back up. Do you want to try to take some of that off? I think if you can glop it back, that would be helpful, yeah. Just be careful. Back wedge? Well, there's not a, it's not really a wedge, it's a back or cut. Or just a back yeah. relief, yeah. And then you leave about an inch to two inches, it's like a, it's called the hinge. Yeah. And it's basically a board that is holding it. And then from there, you can kind of cut, you can start using wedges. Kind of cut more off one side of the hinge and it kind of directs it cool so i'm no expert but i, mean, I think i can do it yeah i don't see why famous not. last words and you cut you cut this wedge lower and then you cut them on the same plane oh same plane yeah oh, okay so you cut flat here and then down at 70 degrees one third into the tree come with your back cut do we need to get the no. <laughs> the laser the laser out yeah. and the angle finder. <laughs> Not everything's furniture making, right? <laughs>
goes. <laughs> they come right out now. Okay, so we've cut the wedge into the tree. I think we got that pretty good. So the basic idea is now to come back, flat cut to the wedge, leave uh, an inch or two for an hinge, and then hopefully use some wedges and get her to fall right there where those rocks are kind of. I think we're off to a good start. I feel good about it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that was beautiful. A little sketchy there, but <laughs> no, it was great. We'll have to pull it down with the truck, but it's on the ground, man. It fell exactly where you wanted it. No power lines. No, everything pulled away nice. It's a lot of work in getting this thing processed. Came out great. Cool. Man, look at that. I mean, it's like a pro did that, dude. That was hard, this burl. I, I figured that's what was happening because it, you needed to come in more over here because yeah. the tip of the blade was just hitting yeah. that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it slowed it way down. Man, it's pretty dang good, but it's, as it's laying, it's pretty sketchy. Definitely don't want to be crawling in there. No, not at all. <laughs> that goes without saying. Yeah, no, I think we just start taking stuff from the outside yep. off. Yep. All right, let's take a quick break. I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, Sunday, which I'm actually very excited about. They are a subscription service that helps you with your lawn care. Now, I have a fairly sizable two and a half acres, not sizable, but it's a fairly large space out here. Um, and we have a small area around the house that is uh, has nice grass. And I sh it's a challenge for me always to keep it green. So Sunday uses unique data combined with cutting edge science to help you grow a greener yard. They use things like soil climate and satellite data to model your lawn and build a custom plan just for you. It ships directly to your door and only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to apply the product. So the process is super easy. You just go to Sunday's website, type in your address and you start your lawn analysis. You'll get customized lawn care plan in seconds. They also allow you to add on product that you might want. For me, I got um, some mosquito spray. This is the mosquito spray and it is actually what it contains. The active ingredients are cedar wood oil and lemongrass oil. You know, if you can pronounce it, it's going to be good for you. So one of the other cool things they do is they give you a soil test kit. So basically what you do is you go out, they give you directions, you dig up some of your dirt, mix it all together in a bag that they provide, drop it in a box, they give you a return label, slap the return label on, send it back to Sunday. So that way you can tell what you might need to supplement with to grow your grass better. Sunday is actually offering my viewers 20% off. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't go try it. It's springtime. It is time to get your yard green. So just go to getsunday.com forward slash Andy Rawls to get 20% off. You get everything you need to get a beautiful green lawn. I just want to say thanks to Sunday for sponsoring the video, for supporting the channel. Let's get back to this tree. Almost hit you. 
I was further away. I don't think I could even get it with that branch, so I'm impressed. This one's not too bad. This one's heavier. <laughs> I don't think I'll hurt myself. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I think that's gonna snap. Give it a shot if you can, I don't know. I throw something at it, there you go. <laughs> Woo. Didn't break. I really thought that was gonna break. I thought it was too. Hold on. <laughs> Come here. Any uh. more force. Come on! Wow. All right. Yeah, careful. Oh my gosh, how is that not going? That's impressive. It's very impressive. Just a little cut and I think it's gonna go. Yeah, cool. Look at this thing. Dude, what? A couple inches in the ground, man. Just leave that there for a while. It's like Excalibur's sword. <laughs> yeah. Man, imagine if you were laying there. No, thank that's you. A bad, that's a bad thing doing that. Yeah. Okay, the tree is down. A morning's worth of work. It's a lot of hard work. We got a ton of firewood, which is pretty awesome. Uh, all the branches and all that, I dropped the trailer off way down in the field down there. That's where I burn all my brush, so that's where I'll put that. We decided to make things easier to just cut this in half. I'm not wanting, I don't need to get big giant slabs out of this. Actually, what we're gonna do is quarter saw it. So, we're gonna drag it. We've already dragged one tree from over there. We're gonna drag this one with a truck over into the shade at Robert's request, because it's hot in Texas. So at this point, I was worn out, man. We had worked, it was about two o'clock and we had worked all morning uh, taking that tree down, dragging all the brush out, all the big chunks going in the firewood pile. So um, I was feeling pretty worn out. I know Robert was too. And we started having some ch ch some chainsaw issues, uh, which we managed to kind of repair and patch. And, and, and we got through half of the log. So we got five boards out of the first half of the trunk and then we left the other half for another day because uh, we just, about all we could handle for one day, which is actually pretty impressive that we were able to take down a tree and get a bunch of boards sawed up in one day. What I'll do is we'll get to number eight and I'll let you straighten it out. Okay. I don't think you'd want to do that to that board plane.
One slide down, man. That was significantly less time than the first one. I think we've improved. Alright. Turn it up this way. This is a this is Maggie's tree. We cut it down. Wanna come look at it? Let me get this off first, okay? It's not dusty. Yeah, what's up, man? Woo! That's pretty looking, man. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Well, we gotta put our rocks back. We'll put our rocks back, and that's where Maggie will be. Oh yeah. I know. Look at that, man. I mean, I think you're seeing a little bit more because of the wave of the chainsaw, yeah. but hey, Juddy, that's called a crotch. Is that cool? See that, bud? Yeah. All that cool grain. Doesn't that look neat? Yeah. Juddy, you ready for this? Less dramatic than I thought it would be. Makes it pop a little. It's a nice icebox. It's crazy the color it has. Yeah. It's so cool right it here. It almost, almost has that like fumed. It has like a fumed look. It does. Yeah. 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 Like an English oak. Tight, tight grain though. That's crazy. All right, so that's gonna shut it down for this video. Real quick, I wanna show you guys, um, well, this is what we got. There's some bonus footage for this video if you're a Patreon, or if you wanna see that, you can become a Patreon over my Patreon page. If you were watching earlier in the video and you caught it, there's actually a really nice burl at the base of this tree, and uh, we harvested that and cut it out, and um, got some beautiful pieces of burl, and I'm gonna tell you, man, the grain on that was insane. You'll have to go over and check out my Patreon page if you wanna see that. Thanks to all the Patreons who support me. Thanks to you guys for tuning in. Real quick before we leave you, let's get, I want to give you a sneak peek. We've got some cool things going on in the shop. Um, this is a 12-foot trestle table that I sell off my website as part of our catalog. Very beautiful table in Texas pecan. An awesome bench to go with it. Kind of a shaker style. The top to this is what's so amazing. It's over there on that workbench. And I don't want to give too much away because there's a lot of... It's, it's curly pecan. It's curly pecan. So very rare, very rare. You don't get that a lot. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. Um, also, there is a bunch of mesquite. I don't know if you're familiar with mesquite, but this is a Texas uh, native. Well, not, it's, it goes into Mexico and a few other areas, but it's a really cool wood. It's kind of special to Texas. We're going to be building, that's from a friend's ranch. We're going to be building a queen bed out of that. So stay tuned. A lot of cool footage. If you want to catch and see the burl, you'll have to head over to my Patreon. Thank you to Sunday for sponsoring the channel, for supporting the channel, and thank you to you guys for tuning in. Y'all are awesome. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.